I'm Tinny from Mini Bowl Design, and today I'm out in the front yard, uh, just like always. Uh, the sun was out. By the time I got the camera set up, it went into a cloud bank. I don't expect to see it again today. But uh, that having been said, it's still a nice warm day out. Now, I went out in the factory this morning and built up my fire like I do every morning. And Beth brought out her list. I think, how many orders do you have today? Oh, wow. Beth had 11 orders today. And I got all the stuff from that. A good part of it was lids. I had a lot of lids. <laughs> but I had most of the blanks. I think I had all of the blanks. I didn't have to make any. I did have to make a batch of knobs for the lids, though. Uh, and then uh, the mail came, and I got a whole bunch of parts for my parabolic ear. And I'm in the process of sorting that all out and, and figuring out. In the next few days, I'll get that together enough so we can uh, do some pictures of it. But there is one little thing in the book I wanted to show you, maybe a little later. Uh, I'm also working on a prototype out here in the garage, out here in the factory, and Sue is in the house uh, making bread. So let's look at the prototype, and then I'll show you a little bit of her uh, bread making process. Now, once I got all of Beth's stuff, I started working on a prototype. Now, what prompted this prototype was uh, one of my longtime customers, a uh, close personal friend <laughs> and cult member from uh, Puerto Rico, uh, was asking me about a stove with a big flame ring uh, that could run off of a remote. He's been using a BIOS uh, with a pot stand, but he has to keep refueling it because it, it runs out of fuel. And now the regular wick stoves, the flame is concentrated in the middle and he's using a fairly large frying pan and he gets hot spots in it. It's one of those backpacking frying pans that's really thin. What he wanted was a backpacking stove, not a cake cap, but a backpacking stove that threw a big flame like a BIOS uh, that was refuelable uh, with a remote. So I'm working on that. Uh, and this is my first prototype, and then I went to a bigger one. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. Yeah, this last one is four inches in diameter, and it's, it's too big. It's, it's insane. And this smaller one, uh, it's, it's got its own bugs in it. I'm thinking about calling it a hoop stove because, uh, obviously, it's uh, like a hula hoop. <laughs> so I'm still working on that, and uh, as I figure it out, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep taking pictures of it and doing videos of it. Uh, I don't know whether it's going to make the cut or not. I've got a few issues that I've got to work through before I uh, decide. Sometimes it's best just to walk away and go uh, work on the electronics for a while. Leave it. So, uh, let's go in, go up in the studio, and I'll show you some comical stuff in this project I'm working with with this parabolic ear uh, that I find kind of comical in the way they laid it out in the book. And then uh, we'll look at... Uh, some of Sue's bread making skills. Okay, here's my dummies book. And I'm trying to do this with one hand, hold the camera with the other hand. Not working real well. You need to turn some lights on here. There we go, that's better. Another one over here. Okay, it gives you a picture of, of the guy running it. And then right here, it gives you the schematic shows you where everything goes in the schematic. Now, what throws me is everything's numbered, like this is uh, R2 and this is C3. Okay, and there should be a list right here or below it that says C3 is a certain, you know, C is a capacitor. C3 should be like a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor or whatever, but uh, it's missing. So I think, well, I'll be on the next page. Well, next page, uh, they, 
you know, it's like C2 and says, you know, C2 sets the voltage gain of the IC to 200. Therefore, the voltage out is 200 times the voltage in, yada, yada. But it doesn't say what the value of the C3 is. It just tells you what it does. Well, you know, that, that. So you go to the next part. Here's a list of everything you need to build it, all the components. And it tells what they are, but it doesn't correlate them with C3 or R1 or anything. Okay, and then it shows you a bunch of components. <laughs> and you go on, it shows you how to put things together. You get it, now it's showing putting it on a breadboard. And you actually have to get in here, three or four pages, and, and there it tells you, okay, C3, uh, C1, oh, here we go. Uh, 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, C1. So it tells you that, but it doesn't tell you all of them. And you kind of got to go look on the board and kind of patch it together. In other words, this isn't put together very well. And if you weren't paying close attention and willing to go all correlate back and forth, uh, you wouldn't even be able to do it. Not laid out well at all, but I, I will slowly, if I read 10 pages here, I'll find out what uh, C5 and R1 are, but uh, not not the best way to go. Should have right back here at the schematic. Should have had right here a list of C1 is, C2 is, R1 is. Would have made it a lot easier for everybody involved, especially when you're looking at the schematic, trying to figure out where everything goes and what everything is. But, you know, that's just my two cents. I'm no expert. The ironic part about this is... The person that did this was an expert, but I think he uh, probably was a victim of assumption. He probably thought, well, you can look at that and see in there. That's obviously, no. Now, that's the reason why they call this electronics for dummies, not electronics for the assumption. <laughs> Let's get down and make some bread. See if I got half and half. I think I got a little more on that one. <laughs> Pretty, pretty. The butter her up. Oh, okay. Soften the crust. I'm Timmy from Mini Bowl Design. Get out and hike, take a friend, enjoy the great outdoors, and more important than anything, try to have some fun today and try to have a really great day. Bye bye.